Hey, it's Dr. Tart, clinical psychologist, here to talk to you about black men's and black boys' mental health relative to the surprising and alarming spike in suicides. At the time of me doing this, two 26-year-old sons have committed suicide within a week of one another. And so I'm going to focus in this video right now, which you probably have never seen before, what you need to look for if you're a mom, if you're a dad, if you're a father, a son, if you're just a, a male right now, and you're trying to figure out what are the warning signs so that you can either help yourself or help a loved one? What are the warning signs to look for when it comes to suicide? All right. That is that that is important. All right. So um, let me pray. Lord God, just ask and pray that you bless this episode, Lord, that you allow them to be able to see what needs to be seen, to be able to interact uh, just and intercede, Lord, quickly to help their sons, their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, a loved one, their boyfriend, help themselves, Lord, to be able to go in the other direction other than considering suicide. Lord, so we ask and pray that you use me as your servant. These things we ask in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So, so let's dive in. We're going to get right to it again. First of all, welcome to another edition of Heart to Heart with Dr. Tart. I am a clinical psychologist and I am here to serve you today in talking about mental health, mental wellness, depression, sadness, anxiety, really focusing on suicide prevention. So get ready, share this, you know, with a loved one. This is going to save a life. All right. And so we look at it. Let's talk about suicide prevention in black males because it does not look like anything you've ever seen, even though this will absolutely transfer to any other man, any other race, by and large. I know there's cultural differences, but I really want you to listen to this regardless, but because I'm a black man and the rates for African-Americans are just skyrocketing, I wanted to address my community. Make sure you like and subscribe to this. It's how this grows. This gets to the people. Let me know that you like it. Go ahead and subscribe to the next video. You don't have to look for it. It's coming directly to you. All right. So why am I doing this right now? In the news as of this week, you know, Regina King lost her son, uh, her son Ian, to, uh, Ian Jr. to suicide. And it really stuck out to me. My wife came to me because we just had a boy. At the time of this, our son is one month old. And she says, babe, this is so scary. What do you know about this? And immediately I was convicted. And I've not been really sleeping well the last couple of days because I've been up doing the research and preparing for this. Right. And so the suicide death rate around black youth has been found to be increasing faster than any other racial or ethnic group. And that is that is coming from the emergency task force on black youth suicide uh, a report. I reviewed thoroughly uh, by Representative Bonnie Watson. Coleman, who I've not had the pleasure of meeting. So I'm doing this because I want you to know what to look out for. And in this video, I'm going to give you seven specific things you need to look out for. Seven things you need to look out for to just be able to screen it because suicide is very, very preventable. All right. So let's let's look at the statistics. All right. This is a call to action to protect sons and fathers. Seventy eight percent of those who die via suicide are men. Uh, do women. Uh, women uh, try it more. But men succeed because we use more lethal means. All right. So for every death by suicide, there are 25 attempts. So we're not just talking about suicide. We're just talking about suicidal ideation as well. And suicide is the second leading cause of death for youth 10 and 19 and has doubled since 2007. That right there should alarm you. And suicide is preventable because there's so many warning signs to look out for. But when it comes to male psychology and how we present, it is it is easier said than done. So I want to give you the things to look out for so that you know what you are doing. OK, so let's, let's talk about how to raise uh, boys and men to be well. OK, I want you just to think just for a minute. What if we could change the way black boys and men think about mental health? Right. Uh, what, what if we could identify issues and characteristics and warning signs earlier? And what if we could do something to help black boys and men heal as a support? One of the things that I often see. One of the things that we often see is that black men, men in general, this is a male thing, in my opinion, uh, don't like to get help. Right. We don't need help. Which is, it's manlier to keep your feelings and your emotions inside versus sharing them. And actually, there's nothing weaker that we can do from nothing that weakens our ability 
to handle stress other than to suppress our true emotions. Because what happens is whatever you suppress has control of you. See, whatever you can speak about, you have control of. But what you can't speak about has control of you. It's like cancer. If you don't want to go in and get the scan to figure out what's going on and figure out where your cancer is, it's just going to metastasize and go from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four. So I ask you, what is the stronger approach? What is the healthier approach to go in and have surgery once you recognize it and, and get it out and get the treatment or let it metastasize and take you out? So we have to take away this notion that manhood is about not discussing your feelings. That makes you inhumane. That makes you a tree. That makes you a laptop. That is not a man. A man is human. Human. You are human. It is manly to talk about your feelings if you want to solve your issues and you want to feel better. I'm just going to keep it. I'm just going to keep it real with you. All right, so we have to change that mindset that it is not manly to keep your feelings inside. It is not manly not to cry. If you are sad, it is better to cry because all you're going to do is cry with your behavior, your emotions. You're going to get depressed. You're going to shut down because your emotions will not lie. Now, let me let me let me go over uh, uh, something. This is coming from a national organization of people of color against suicide. OK, so Noctis. All right. And this is how quick screen because I know some of you are just going to make it to this part. Just give me how to screen. All right. Remember this acronym is path warm is the path warm okay but is path warm all right ideation if you see someone thinking about uh about suicide whether they're posting about it talking about it hey i just gonna take myself out you hear that that's a warning sign s if you see substance abuse all right if you see substance abuse combined with ideation you see someone usually instead of talking tend to kind of self-medicate and what is substance uh antidepressant what is alcohol it's it's a depressant rather it is a depressant, right? And so you're actually feeling sad and drinking to feel better, but actually what you're doing is you're depressing yourself even more. Purposelessness, I'm gonna get into that later. A man who has no sense of purpose is in incredible psychological distress. Anxiety, uh, a man who feels trapped, a man who feels hopeless. And a lot of times men feel hopeless in silence. Uh, withdrawal, you know, if you see a man that's kind of like just disconnecting from society and, and drawing into himself or drawing into just an animal, his dog, you know, it is just staying by himself, isolating, not connecting with people. That is a warning sign. Uh, anger, because anger can either go out or it can go in. Right. Uh, recklessness. So uh, a lot of and let me let me let me just stay right. Recklessness and mood changes. And that comes to the National Association for People of Color Against Suicide. You know, knockbus.com. Check that out. So what we see a lot of times in teen boys and young adult males, we don't see a suicidal ideation where it's like crying. We see someone that doesn't care if they die. All right. So the recklessness. When I used to work in Inglewood, I used to see a lot of kids, unfortunately, who were caught up in gangs and they would do very, very, very dangerous tasks. But they didn't care if they died. Like they were depressed, but they looked aggressive. I don't care if I go in and they shoot me. It's whatever. Right. When you start hearing that language, I don't care how much I smoke my drink. You know, I'm just lucky to live to 17. When you hear that kind of conversation, that is depression. That's what it looks and sounds like, you know, especially with with black youth, but that occurs, that, that goes on across the board. It just looks different. And so you have to look for, is there a care for what happens in your life versus the traditional crying and sadness? You have to look out for that. All right. So let's, let's talk about these issues one by one. All right. Risk factor. I'm gonna give you seven risk factors, and then I'm gonna give you seven protective factors. So you know exactly what to do if you are working with someone who's depressed, or if you have someone you know is thinking about suicide, or you're thinking about suicide, you're depressed, and you want to figure out how to reverse this, I'm going to tell you. All right, number one risk factor is called meta emotions. Meta emotions are what we think about emotions, meta emotions, right? And so a lot of men don't feel like they should talk. They feel like talking about emotions is weak. Talking about emotions is unmanly. What's the point of talking about my feelings if it's not going to change anything? What's the point of crying about spilled milk? And, and a warning sign, as, as a parent, when you tell your son, don't you cry, don't you suck it up, right? And you tell him, don't, don't outwardly display your emotions. This is how you raise emotionless men. All right, the same thing you complain about later. You don't talk, you don't open up, you don't express emotions. You just sit there like a lump on a log, right? And yeah, but he was raised that way. That how he feels, how how he uh, is is 
not to emote. And so men that don't feel like there's a point in expressing themselves are high risk because when life comes, they don't express it. All right. And whatever you let out, it's like throw up. If I eat a tuna sandwich and I throw, I don't feel good. If I throw it up, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it stinks. Yeah, I'm talking about everything is awful, right? But it's out of my system, right? But if I keep it in, I'm just going to feel worse and worse. And then my coping mechanism, my vices, everything that I'm doing to try to try to self-soothe, it's unhealthy, just, just goes out of alignment. So teach your sons it's okay to talk about their emotions, all right? Now, I'm not going to teach my son to cry all the time. You need to teach him to cry sometimes. Right. Because if he doesn't cry, he's going to act out. How does he express sadness? Is it possible for a male, a man, a human to go through life and never feel like crying? I mean, that's not real. I mean, that, do, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, we just cannot do this to our sons. So throw that in the way. You have to be able to talk about it. Right. And so what we want to do instead is something called emotion coaching. All right. It's a shameless plug. My wife and I run a, a weekend for love marriage retreat. If y'all looking for a high end marriage retreat to help you out with your marriage, check it out where we teach emotion coaching with men being able to express themselves to their wives. And so we have to teach boys and men and men to talk and express their troubles and worries real time and proactively. All right. And so it says Proverbs 15, 22, because I'm a Christian psychologist. So you don't get it. You know, plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. Now, what does that mean? All right. That means that if you're having an issue as a man, all right, the president of the United States, the president of any country has a cabinet, uh, a, a pastor has a trustee board. We know it's a lot of issues there. I'm not going to get into that. All right. A president of the university has a board of advisors. Right. If you're CEO, if, if you are owner of a company. All right. You have a board of advisors. You bring on a board and you seek their wise counsel to help you be more educated in the business and what you're doing. So as a man, plans will fail if you try to figure things out all by yourself. Right. If you just try to figure everything out on your own, you're going to fail and you're going to actually stress yourself out. So it's actually manly to be able to express your issues with those around you. All right. Your wife, your girlfriend, your homies, uh, a counselor. It is OK to have wise counsel as to figure out how to do life. That is something that is perfectly OK. And it is a smart thing to do. And also men have to be taught emotion vocabulary. That's emotion coaching. All right. I am sad. I am frustrated. I'm feeling hopeless. I'm feeling helpless. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling disrespected. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling unseen. We have to give men an emotional vocabulary to be able to articulate and express how we really feel. We are not robots. You feel me? All right. Number two thing to look out for is incompetency. I mean, this is big. This is huge. All right. There's two big ones I'm going to talk about. This is one of them. All right incompetency a man who cannot fix their problems well that is a red flag all right a man that feels like he cannot fix his issues incompetent that's our ego competency right and the research shows all you need is a boy or a man needs to have one core competence that one like a man that knows how to play football that's enough to negate he can't read doesn't look very good doesn't feel popular, can't dance, can't sing, whatever, but he can ball. All right. Like someone else that knows they're intelligent. Well, they may not be the most social. They may not be the most athletic, but if he knows, Hey, I am good at school. I am good at athletics. I am good at dancing. I am good at gaming. I am good at YouTubing. I, I am good at expressing myself. I am good at giving advice. I am good at building things, making things, art, they have to have a core competence, right? So that's why it's important that as you are raising your sons, it is important that they are competent, that they feel like they can do something, all right? So what's the protective factor for that? Reversing that is work ethic. You have to teach boys and men to work hard, to build habits, to be resourceful and act on dreams. The worst thing that you can do as a mom, as a parent, is have your kids be entitled and give them everything. You have to teach them how to work, right? It's, it's, we'll get into it a little bit later. It's called learned industriousness. You learn how to work. You learn that what you do, how you move, you can change life by how hard you work, right? You may not get it the first time. You may not get it the second time. But if you keep working at it, you're going to realize 
all right, that you can overcome a lot of obstacles. It says in the Bible, Galatians 6, 5 says, for each one should carry their own load, put in work. So moms, you cannot give it to your son. Do not. If you are affluent, do not give it to your son. Allow him to be. Shaq talked about that. He said he was rich, but his kids are going to be able to earn it on their own because he realizes from parenting for a while, it is important to allow. Duvall talks about this from Kadena and Duvall's podcast. Talked about how he had entitled. His sons were now entitled because he had given them everything he didn't have. And now he didn't even like the character traits that they were displaying because the the essence of who he is being able to get something out of nothing they had not acquired. Right. So you must teach boys work ethic. The worst thing for a boy to be or a man to be is lazy. All right. And incompetent. All right. Because if he's incompetent, he has no base and he's going to seek sex. He's going to seek drugs. He's going to seek alcohol to try to find some type of validation, uh, violence, whatever else he's going to do. It's going to be dysfunctional. At the end of the day, he wants to be competent. All right. Uh, Number three, uh, purposelessness. All right. Men who feel lost and feel no sense of grand purpose are elevation for their lives. Their lives, they're underliving. Right. So where they want to be is here and where they are is here. This amount of space right here is dangerous for men, all right? And so men that don't feel like they can level up, all right? Now, now men are happy when they're leveling up. Like LeBron James is happy going after a title, even after a loss. Tom Brady is happy going after a title. You know, we're happy going after the next goal, right? It's thrill, it's seeking, it's a challenge. We like lifting up the next set of weight, right? We put up 200, let's go for 225. We like that. But when you feel like you cannot level up, and other men can. And men, we're just straight up, we're very direct. Like, you look, you're not about that life. You're not about that business. We actually disrespect you. We do not respect a man. We do not have high regard for a man who cannot level up, right? So to raise a boy or a man in that environment where it is pretty much about results when it comes to men, we're not about all that talk. Either you can do it or you can't. Right. And if you can't level up, it is hard to have high self-esteem when you feel a sense of purposeless and you can't move up. Right. And so so here's this is a protective factor. So protective factor is purpose. All right. So men must actively pursue and work to find their passion and unique purpose. You know, the worst thing that your son can say is, I don't know. Where do you want to be? I don't know. The man in your life, I now should know what I want to do. Now, they may not know how to do it. That's different. But there has to be a sense of purpose as to why you create it. You can go to work and just 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 trying to make the donuts. But that's going to dull you out. Right. It says in Proverbs 29, 18. All right. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Basically, to break that down, without a vision, the people perish. All right. Without a vision, the people perish. And so that means that with it. So that also means that with a vision, people flourish. Flourish. So if I know, I know I was created to be a psychologist. I know I was created to merge, you know, faith and psychology. I know that. I know I was created to be a husband and a father. I know these things, right? I know these things and I know these things well. So I'm every day I'm operating in my purpose. And so that helps because when times get rough, right? When I have to do videos like this, I have to talk about suicide prevention and it's not fun, right? I, I, I'm, I'm on my purpose. When it gets, when you're in the middle of a pandemic and you're having to help more people than what it seems like you can really do in a healthy way because there's just a shortage of black male psychologists and people in need and old clients coming back because life is struggling. I'm able to wake up every day and still be happy that I'm doing my part because I'm operating in purpose. All right, number four, loneliness. So men who struggle with social relationships and spend too much time alone and withdraw. I see this a lot with teen boys, right? So something to be aware of, all right? If if you struggle making friends as, as a young man, or as a man, you are cutting off social support. That loneliness is going to hit you and it's going to hit you hard, right? And so there are a lot of boys that just struggle with vocabulary. They struggle being pro-social. Pro-social means I'm able to go into a situation and be proactive about creating friends, proactive about getting a girlfriend or a partner, proactive about participating, raising my hand in class, joining organizations. I don't start the action. Right. You, you know, there, there are men out there that never met a stranger. They can walk in a room and they can they can network. You have to teach your sons how to be able to do that relative 
to their personality, right? They should, there's some men that can walk, not big on crowds, but in a small group, you know, at the gym, they should be able to make a friend, right? Playing cards, they should be able to make a friend. Uh, at, at a restaurant, at, you know, at the bar or whatever, they should be able to make a friend. In, in men's group ministry, they should be able to make a friend versus just sitting and watching and not trusting people. Loneliness, all right? You know, it says in, in, in uh, Genesis 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who's just right for him, right? I'll make him a helpmate, which typically, you know, is talking about a woman. But really, what we're talking about it's not good for man to be alone, meaning having no friends. So what's the solution? Connectedness. You know, teaching men to be proactive in creating tribes and, and, and succeed in relationships and marriage is where it needs to be. That's why in Proverbs 18, 22, it says, the, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and gains favor in the Lord. He who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. I mean, she's good when she when you met her. She's already good and she's good for you and you gain favor in the Lord. That right? means the Lord looks out for you highly through this gift of a woman for the man. You get what I'm saying? All right. And so what I'm saying is that it's not good. To, and I'm not saying that every man is going to get married and every man is going to be in a relationship, but he should at least have a tribe of friends and people that he does life with. Right. That's how we have that connectedness. Right. That, that's why that's why the fist is stronger than any one of the separate fingers. I can break this finger, but it's hard for you to break this finger when it's connected, you know, to my fist, to my you know, what I'm saying. So we have to have our men group up. You, if, if you're if you're if your sons and, and the man in your life has no friends, that is a warning sign. That is a warning sign. Sign, right. He needs some friends. He needs some connections outside of you to be able to thrive. You have to make sure that he's able to play fair in the sand. He's able to make friends. He's not always getting kicked out of parties of people, you know, uh, always not getting along with. I'm not going to say certain celebrities, but there's a certain football player right now. Who just you just walked off the field. It's difficult for him to maintain interpersonal relationships no matter what team he's on. Right. And, and until he gets help, his interpersonal skills uh, are, are going to continue to ruin every relationship that he's in because he does not know how to relate well to people. If they can only tolerate him for a certain amount of time and then he wears out his welcome because he does not know how to relate to people. If that is you, you need to go and get some counseling. I'm going to say it so that you can relate well to people. I don't worry about the stigma of psychology. I worry about the stigma of being weak. Like if I can't make good relationships and I can't and I wear up my welcome and I and I, I take every relationship and I ruin it. I don't want that. I'd rather go. I'd rather go level up, get wise counsel and be a better man. Right. All right. Number five. All right. Pessimism. All right. Men with negative thinking styles and low self-efficacy, which is the ability to fix themselves. Uh, that's a problem because you're not you're able. You see the glasses have empty versus full. Right. And so in a pandemic, you'll say, all right, man, you know, I don't know where I'm going to get money from. I don't know what's going to happen. I can't make it happen. The world is cruel. I can't trust the government. And it just spirals versus self-efficacy and say, you know what? More people are going to be at home on their laptops. Can I create friendships online? Can I build an online course online? Can I YouTube? Can I game? Let me use the online community to be able to go and get this money because I just lost my job. But this might be an opportunity to pursue my passion. See, that's optimism. But when you have pessimism combined with sadness, combined with trauma, combined with with incompetence, do you see how this can spiral out of control? Is this making sense? So the, so the, the protective factor is uh, is optimism, coping. So we have to teach men, learn optimism, like how to think positively and how to be mentally tough using what we call a psychologist uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. All right. And so what that looks like is, you know, there's an event and then there's how you think about the event. OK, and then there's how you feel about the event and then there's how you behave. All the power comes in how to think about it. All right. So if I'm a baseball player and I strike out and I think I am awful, I'm never going to measure up. How do I feel? I feel depressed. Right. I feel sad. How do I behave? I avoid practice or I get frustrated and I start over swinging or I start drinking or I start acting out, you know. But if I go back and say, you know what, I have to learn how to hit a curveball. They figured me out. I've worked with a number of professional baseball players. Right. They figured out my strength and they're pitching to my weakness. All right. I'm going to have to learn how to uh, bait them into throwing into my strength by being more patient. If they can't locate their pitch, because they're going to have to come back to that fastball, or I'm going to have to learn how to hit this pitch well enough for them to be able to respect it 
to then have to mix it up. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm just going to have to pick up another skill. So that means I feel better. I feel empowered. I just have to put in work. And what do I do? I go to the batting cage. I hire a hitting coach. I hire C.J. Stewart, right, who's worked with half of African-American baseball players, an organization here in Atlanta called Lee, along with his wife, Kelly Stewart, right? So you figure out a way to fix it. All right. My marriage is not, you know, I don't suck at marriage. I just need to learn how to express myself better because I, I never learned that. You know, you might not have, you might have never seen that. You know, my dad, my mom and dad are still together. God bless. But I never saw them argue too much because they when they really get into it, they go behind closed doors. Right. But you can learn that there's videos, there's counseling, there's books that show you how to have successful conflict resolution. All right. It says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you future and hope in those days when you pray. I will listen. So come to me as God. And if you look to me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So basically what that means, my friends, that means that that's optimism. But I know the plans I have for you. It may seem they're going to prosper you. It, is, it, it may seem like they're going to stunt your development. It may seem like it's going backwards, but there's a master plan that you can't see. And if you come to prayer and you seek wise counsel and you find me through, through Bible study, through talking to other men, through getting advice, through fasting, whatever, I'm going to give you the solution. So this storm right now is temporary and this storm is going to help develop you into the man you need to be to handle the successes that's coming. I'm not stopping you. I'm making you more patient. I'm helping you develop res re resiliency, grit. I I'm, I'm giving you um, temptation tolerance for when you make it. I'm helping. I'm delaying the process so that when you finally get it, you don't blow it on 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 prostitutes. You don't blow it on drugs and alcohol. You don't blow it frivolously on, on trying to look good for everyone and living above your means, right? So there's a reason for everything. And so you're able to find the silver lining in the dark cloud. You're going to ward off depression and suicide a lot better. All right, risk factor number six, we're almost there. Uh, vices. So men who try to fix their pain with vices, sex, drugs, alcohol, cigarette, other toxic relationships, a higher risk for depression. Right. What is alcohol? A depressant. Right. Uh, even if you take something like cocaine or heroin, something that's an upper. Once you come down, you get to go right back up. Scotty has to bend you right back on up. Starship Enterprise to feel good. And so what you do is you psychologically tell yourself, I can't solve my problems. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to do that. It's more manly to drink myself into a stupor so that I can stress out my wife because I'm drunk. Stress out my kids because I'm drunk. I'm high, so I'm losing my job, right? And I'm psychologically dependent on an outside substance, on some weed, on, on the pills, or on some powder, right, to, to make me feel good. Now, I'm not judging it. I just want you to see that's not manly. It's actually the weaker. It's the weaker response because it's, it's actually tougher to sit down and talk about, yeah, when I was younger, something happened. Or, you know what? I feel incompetent in relationships. I don't know who I am. You know, I wear out my welcome with people. Or I don't feel like I measure up to other men. I never show it, but I don't feel like I, I measure up. All right? And so those vices we have to watch out for. And you have to watch out for how you market it to. You know, you see in movies, hey, you know, I'm stressed out. Bad day. What do they do? They go and pour you a drink. That's not going to help you with your day. Now, it will take the tension off, but you you can take ashwagandha. You can take chamomile. You can exercise and produce endorphins that are pain relievers. You can meditate. You can pray. There are other things that you can do. You can get a massage. That that uh, You can go to the sauna. You can do multiple things. You can go outside and do a physical task, chop wood, work out, landscape, cut the grass. There's so many things you can do to lower your level of stress that are healthy that you don't need any outside substance for. Right. That's real. All right. That way you're not a slave to the addiction. Because after a while, your body's going to think that 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 drug, that alcohol, uh, that sex, whatever it is, attention, whatever you whatever you do to fix it, it's going to think it's a drug. It's going to think it's water. So we have to teach men how to have healthy habits. Right. Better stress management. So exercise, meditation, yoga, fasting, therapy. All right. Counseling. The stronger man is able to talk. Right. Um, Y'all probably don't know. I used to be a consultant psychologist for the Oklahoma City Thunder, and I still do that work for the NBA. And they bring me in to help men talk about their stress because what they talk about, they can control. Otherwise, it unravels in the world watches. Right. So it's just so these are the most alpha men in the world. They all have psychologists. 
I'm just telling you, in the NBA, they have three, a team psychologist, a uh, players association psychologist, an NBA psychologist. And a lot of times the fourth one uh, that works totally outside of the system that has no affiliation with any of the three. That's how stressful it is because you have to be able to make it happen. Right. So just realize that this is going on behind the scenes and there's nothing unmanly about getting wise counsel. Right. It says in first Corinthians 9, 24 and 25, it says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do not win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for that eternal prize. Right. So this is talking about healthy. This is learning to deal with stress. You don't think Tom Brady learns how to deal with stress. You, you don't think he's composed without working for someone. And then we went to the same school, University of Michigan. I was there when we won a national championship with Charles Woodson. This is a shout out. That's how I learned sports psychology. I was in that department, right? And so it's real. All athletes, by and large, even in high school now, are meeting with someone like me, right? So develop those healthy habits, right? And so this is just a little piece like that, you know, about that. So like, like fasting, prayer, exercise. I do those things for self-discipline. All right. How do you think you resist temptation other than to practice resisting temptation and fleeing from it? All right. So if I'm exercising, I'm trying to keep the same form because what do I do when I'm tired? If I get sloppy with my form, I'll get sloppy in my wife and my in my in my life. Sloppy with my wife. Right. All right. If, if, if I can't if I can't yoga, if I don't if I do yoga, you have to do hot core yoga, you do any kind of yoga. But if you're doing that, you know, can I maintain my focus when I'm tired? Can I stay in this? You know? Can I hold this block? Or do I not need the blocks? Y'all know what I'm talking about if you take yoga. What do I do when I'm weary? Do I maintain or do I slip? And so you have to build up that mental stamina. Same thing with meditation. Can I quiet my mind when I'm at the free throw line, when I have to make a decision, when my wife is coming at me, when my sons are coming at me, when my money's not long, my money's short. What can I do? What do I do when I underperform in the bedroom? Like, how can I calm myself down, find a solution without blowing up? That is that is huge. You know, exercise. Can I exercise to get to the best mental state, to be relaxed, to have higher stress tolerance when I walk into the business meeting because I have to be alpha? Right. Like last one. All right. Shame and pain. This is the second one. This is actually the first one. I told you about, you know, incompetence. Shame and pain. Men who feel like a burden, that is a warning sign. If you ask men, do you feel like killing yourself? The average man is going to say no. All right. But if they express, you know, I feel like a burden, you need to, you need to be alarmed. When they say, I feel like a burden, oh my goodness. And they feel like suicide is the only way to stop the pain or the best way to stop stressing out their wife, stressing out their girlfriend. It's the only way, family. It's the only way to get away from just being a mess up. My wife's not happy. Girlfriend's not happy. I'm living off of my parents. I'm not successful, right? Uh, it, all the money they spent on college, I blew it. I've done a drugs a million times. I keep messing up, right? When men feel like a burden, that is the sign to intervene and help that man to feel strong. It help that man be able to work through it. That is, you know, you have to teach your sons and, and, and men self-efficacy. You're going to have to teach them learned industriousness, how to work through an issue without quitting, how to resist the urge to give them things that they do not work for. You have to resist that. It says in Proverbs 14, 23, work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. That's in the word. I mean, that'll preach right there. So you, this is why you have to help your help your sons realize like no one does it by themselves. You have, if you're going to build this YouTube, you need to have someone promoting your YouTube channel. You need to get someone to help you SEO that thing. You need to get someone to give you fresh content, figure out different software, someone to be on as guests. Don't do life alone. It's too difficult. Even Jesus traveled with 12 disciples and he could do anything. He was a son. He was a son of God. Right. So have that crew. Ask other people. Level up. Don't quit when it gets tough. Keep lifting the weights. It's going to be a point where you max out. You level up. You have to change how you do your, your muscle confusion. Right. You have to do some other things and then go back to it. And you're going to have it. Ask other men how they got past that. Ask other men how, how how they handled the crypto crash, right? When you're supposed to buy, when you're supposed to sell, you got caught up on that FOMO, fear of missing out, and you bought high. How do you have a self-discipline to buy low when that fear and anxiety is high? That's when all the millionaires are made. Just, just learn it. Just learn it. 
Nothing wrong with you. It's just a mindset. So and y'all get, I hope this helps y'all. All right. Let me give y'all some resources, right? So resources is National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, you know, right here, 24 uh, seven. You can text talk to 741741. Um, and if you've lost a friend, if you lost a son or a daughter, this is both compassionatefriends.org, right? It's a support group for a loss of a child because that is the most devastating loss we can sustain, right? We want our children to bury us, not the other way around. And then the National Organization of People of Color Against Suicide. Not because I want you to go there for training. I, I'm not sure if they're still up and running. I believe they are. All right, and teaching you how to actually do suicide prevention work as a school counselor, as clergy, just as something you need to, you just want to learn this, right? Because anyone can teach this. And then if you're looking for a therapist, Psychology Today dot com is my favorite resource because a lot of psychologists and social workers and counselors are on there. You just go to Therapist Finder and they help you find someone and you can look at insurance. You can look at um, uh, rates. You can look at specialties. You can look at gender. You can look at rate. You can look at so many different things and, and find the right person uh, for you. All right. So I hope you all like this. If, if you all want to get in contact with me, that's my information. Just text the social text line 770-637-5710. I send out inspirational videos right to your cell phone. All right. And I do respond. That's my email. If you ever want to book me around relationships or mental health or suicide prevention, I'd be glad to do it. Website is drtart.com. And if you want me to speak, uh, there's my phone number. All right. And so I just be glad to serve. All right. So I love you all. If you like this, make sure that you subscribe and, and like the channel. And I, I want to end with this. You know, uh, we can save our boys. We can save our men's if we just change our mindset. If I can get one man and men do every day on his couch, just open up about how they feel. Right. I know that when I talk, I feel better. And so it's not going to change the situation. Yes, it does. It changes how I feel about the situation. So instead of being a nine, I'm a seven about the situation. And I've sought wise counsel. So I realize how to handle the situation. Right. I realize what moves I need to make. Learned industriousness, self-efficacy, that I can make moves to be able to fix my situation. Right. That I can I can have a different approach about whether I need to take medication if depression runs in my family. No one cares if you take medication, but they do care if you don't measure up. You don't care that Martin Lawrence takes medication. You don't care that Will Smith takes medication. You don't care that Dave Chappelle takes medication. You don't care that Michael Jordan takes medication. You don't care that Will Smith takes medication. And all of them do, and they're public about it. They've taken medication at one point in time. What do you know about them? They're amazing. They're awesome. They handle their business at the highest level possible because they don't see a weakness and ignore it. They don't suppress it. They address it by any means necessary. And that's what you're going to do. So I hope this helps. Y'all let me know if this is helpful. Hit me up. I do love feedback. I want to know this is how I develop, you know, the next content to come out. And I hope and pray that this blesses you and this saves your sons, this saves your brothers, this saves your husbands. All right, Lord God, I just ask and pray that you allow this video to be seen by whomever needs to see it and for them to be able to use it to be able to save their son, to be able to recognize what's going on in their husband and their nephew, their cousin, their brother, so their, their friend. Friend, my confidant, their teammate. Lord, I ask and pray that you have your way to allow men to be strong and to realize that every day is not a great day. This is not Disneyland all the time and that we can struggle and we can figure it out and we can have brothers that sharpen us and sisters who sharpen us and support us for us to be the protectors and the providers that we really want to be. These things we ask in Jesus name. Amen. So I love y'all. Take care. God bless.